Welcome back to What Are Teen Noobs for General Disturbance. Well, this battle has started rather early and uh, we didn't get any countdown, but I suppose that's okay. You're looking at the 212A, the tier 9 Soviet SVG. This one's being driven by Brother Clicker of Olymp and he's on the north spawn of Steps and he's firing his, or finding his firing position. I think he's decided he's going to go onto these tracks, which were laid to uh, use the, uh, the Gustav uh, gun. Is it the Schwer Gustav gun? I'm trying to remember the name, but it's one of the biggest railway artilleries ever used. They had to lay special track in order to use it. And uh, the vehicle actually had to be carried uh, on other railway wagons, then assembled at the firing point and then it had to use special rail track to actually distribute the force of the explosion. Somebody's going to correct me on the name, actually, but it's the Gustav gun. I know certainly that's that's what I call it. Okay, he's firing a shell in at what he believes is the location of an enemy tank, but he can't actually see that except on the minimap at the moment. It's a 203mm B4 howitzer, capable of doing 900 alpha, 52mm pen with a 10.4 beaters burst radius, and with the non-stun HE, 1200 alpha, 65mm pen. And he does have a couple of arm piercing rounds as well. They do 600 alpha, but they have 258mm pen. And they're very, very useful if you've got stationary tanks that are fighting it out amongst your uh, against your teammates. So if you put a big whopping great 203mm shell right down on them, it's bound to hurt. Well, we don't know if he hit that Panzerkampfwagen Sieben, but I think he probably splashed him. Now he's changing position just slightly. Standard reload time, 37.39 seconds. You can see he's got 30.42. And oh, yes, he's actually picked up San Francisco already. So yes, he did splash this guy quite heavily okay we're getting ready for the next shot can't see him in fact now we've lost oh no we haven't lost this guy it's an e 75 yes rounds out and it lands short i'm wondering if when he changed his aim just there suddenly he didn't leave it enough time for it to fully dial in and that's the reason why the shell actually landed short of the target but that panther can even is still there and he's still using that corner, which would make him vulnerable to a shot by an arty. Will she try and aim for the middle of the vehicle? Can't always guarantee that the shell will actually hit the middle of the vehicle. But you see, that was perfectly on target. An HE round did 249 hit points of damage. Admittedly, the guns on these tanks tend to do a lot more damage but uh, when they're firing AP but I think they would still be badly wounded by a 203mm armor piercing round. See, our guys are trying to fight back. The E75TS looks an even more inviting target now. That's it, rounds out. Lands short again. Now he is getting stunned, but for some reason the shells aren't exactly going where he needs them to. Okay, well that guy's gone down and the enemy is actually pulling back. See, the Panzerkampfwagen Sieben is now down to just nine hit points. He's a splash kill. And just behind him is a Gorilla 15. Now the Gorilla 15 would make a very inviting target because he's got very little armor, but he's also virtually full health. Okay, rounds out. That's a kill. Never mess with me. That's a gun taken out of the game. Now, where did that Gorilla 15 go? So he is getting rather close. We do have two defenders between us and the enemy. Okay, the next target's a Panther 88. But from the position we're in, it's difficult to get a shell over the rocks. Yes, those rocks are actually getting in the way because the shell, because the target's so close, the shell actually, instead of going up and over, it's actually going horizontally almost. And that means you need a new angle in order to hit the target. Down to the south, we've noticed there are some enemy tanks that are defending their cap area. And they're behind these rocks over here. Well, that's where they were last seen, including a Borsig and a T-28 prototype. 
Our guys are moving down the east side of the map, getting very close to the enemy cap area. They're going to start taking fire from some of those tank destroyers very shortly. And when they do, then they could do with our help. And yep, lo and behold, a leopard prototype comes into the target, comes into sight, rounds out on him. Oh, that's, that's a penetrating shot, 996. And it hit the rear of the vehicle as well. So it was a good shot, a valid shot. And it did a huge amount of damage. That leopard's not going to be a happy bunny. And we can now see the Borsig actually relocated to the next set of rocks over. Because they weren't happy with the position that they were in. The leopard decided to go down in the dip. And I think he's now realizing that that was a bit of a mistake. Because he's taking fire from the north. And another direct hit. This time it was on the Doom Turtle. But it's only 351 hit points. Brother Click is doing well, and he's selected a target where there's lots of viable targets to actually hit. Selected an area, rather, where there's viable targets. That Leopard prototype, though, is still uh, a problem. And in fact, actually, he is being marked by one of our teammates, the Udes. Rounds out. He's backing up. And he takes another splat, and he goes down. 304 hit points of damage, 189 stun assist, and that was a useful gun taken out of the game because the Leopard prototype could sit there and snipe at our teammates, keeping them lit. The, the enemy still has a Yudas up on the cliffs, but uh, and he's a nuisance as well. We really need to suppress him, but we're now looking at this gorilla. We're almost loaded. Now, the gorilla's gone face-to-face -face with the 263, and the gorilla comes off worse. But yes, we really need to go to the heights where that Yudes is and suppress him. Our guys are now moving down the west side of the map as well. We're two tanks up on the enemy. We're firing into the position where the enemy tank destroyers were last seen. But as I said, that Yudes on the cliffs right at the bottom of the map, that's the one that we should be dealing with at the moment. It's a Yudes 14-5. He's already got a kill. The only enemy we haven't seen so far is the GW Tiger on the enemy team. And I suspect that he's somewhere in K4 or K5. Okay, he fired that one and pulled away straight away. So we didn't get to see what actually happened to that shell. The enemy doesn't have any light tanks. So we don't have to worry about somebody suddenly appearing out of nowhere. And whilst the enemy might be doing counter battery, I, I rather doubt it because they are now down by two. And I think the enemy RT is going to be focusing on our guys. Rounds out. Again, he did it. He fired and scooted. He's not under any counter battery threat. So shooting and scooting like this only deprives you of information you might need. It does make sense to actually go down the east side of the map, get closer to the enemy. Oh, enemy RT was firing. And they are trying to counter battery us now. They have been. We're starting to see the shell markers marking the north area of the map. So he's going for the T-28 again. He does exactly the same fires and moves. Don't know if I'm being unfair to Brother Clicker because he's uh, he's it moving because he thinks that he is being targeted by the enemy RT. And the enemy Caro just took out our 263. Okay, I'm going to take control of the camera now just in case he does exactly the same again. Okay, he's dialing in on T28. This could be good. He did scoot and shoot. But he missed the fact that he actually killed that T-28 prototype with that shell. And we also got some information because we just saw a shell come in from the far west side of the map. So I think we know where the enemy RT is located now. He's somewhere close to the uh, where the assault cap would be in uh, J3 or thereabouts. Yeah, other people are pinging that part of the map now. 
they, they realised that's where the enemy RT went. That's why the shells came in from that angle. Okay, so we're in a position where we can start laying fire down in support of our teammates. Just need sighting of them, please. Someone needs to spot them. Enemy RT's given up on counter battery. I think he's got more important things on his mind. There's only five enemies left. There's one of them. Unfortunately, we've got no shot. It is Doom Turtle. He's done it again. Fired. And we didn't even get to see what happened to the shell. And he did pick up Sun Assist. And then we can see that Udez now up on the cliffs, the 14-5. And it really would help us if that guy was taken down. Because he's preventing our guys on the west on the east side of the map from making any gains. They can't move in whilst he's sitting up there. And yeah, we just got another notification of him. And he's finally realized, yes, that that's the tank that he's actually got to take out. The 14-5. Unfortunately, the angle at which we're firing does make it kind of difficult to get the shell over the rock. But it is important to put that 14-5 down, or at least to stun him enough so that he cannot use his gun to attack our teammates and they can move up and finally finish him off. Okay, so he's working on that corner. Okay, that's why they've marked the map and he's done it again. Yeah, please don't shoot the scoot like this. I mean, honestly, are you being counter-batteried at the moment? Do you actually need to do that? You don't really. Honestly. Well, I'll just have to take control of the camera. And it'll be um, but by manually holding the camera. Doesn't look as good on the video when you do something like that. And he gets another kill. Now, on that occasion, I think he did stay to look. Because it looks like the rescue did remain in the spot. But again, two kills he would have missed out on seeing. But for the fact that I had to manually control the camera. Not good. Okay, the Karen 45T has actually decided to go up that side of the map. And the only thing that's holding him back is the Hori 2. And I think the whole reason behind that is that Yudas on the enemy team kept holding our guys up. And we've lost a huge number of... Well, we haven't lost our advantage. We've still got two tanks. But if, if he can stun this Karo... That's out. He does it again. I'm going to rewind it this time. And I'm going to give a warning to Brother Clicker. If you keep doing that, uh, we'll stop doing your videos. And you won't get any replays done. Because there's no point in doing a video where somebody shoots and scoots. And we don't get to see anything. Okay. Keep saying to players, we don't like to have to do this where we actually can take control of the camera. But he fired and looked away. And that's the reason he didn't get any damage. The shell hit the rock. And he's changing position. So I think he aimed a little late and the shell hit the rock. But the Karo goes down to the Hori 2. Okay, so he's changing his target. And that's the two minute warning. Only one enemy left. It's the GW Tiger. They dealt with the Yudas. Now, he's, he's been found. He was in the general area of where we were indicating earlier. And he does it again. Well, I'm going to replay that again. But I'm going to say, that, you know, this is a final warning to uh, Brother Clicker. If you keep doing this, we will not be doing any of your replays. Please do not shoot and scoot. Unless you're under dire... Um, threat of being wiped out by an enemy um, enemy counter battery and you weren't rounds out well there's the direct hit that killed the GW Tiger and that's the end of the game well it pains me to actually warn uh, fellow RT players and also fellow clan members because I happen to be a member of Olymp uh, when they do something like this, please do not shoot and scoot. Stay to see what happens to the shell before you move away. And if you have to move away because the enemy arty is focusing really hard on you, there's got more than one arty firing in your general direction, then you should 
stay in the aim view and just use your W key or your um, A or D key to move away from the position you were currently located in, but keep watching to see what happens to the shell. It's so important to actually know that the shell either hit the target, hit a rock, hit something uh, important, because obviously that's information you need to know. And if you'd just done what you did, you would have missed out on the fact that you actually did get two kills in the game because you shot at a target, the target got wiped out, but you were looking somewhere else at the time that that happened. So, and it ruins the video for the viewers because of course, then they don't get to see the enemy targets killed. Um, that's part of the point. I mean, if a tank driver did that all the time and just fired and moved away, anybody could do that. You can fire at a, a blank wall and, uh, and move away, but you're not showing the, the, the viewer that you are actually hitting a target. You need to show them that you are actually succeeding and doing something. I mean, even the players who do shoot blind shots in tanks, watch to see what actually happens to the shell as it hits the target or hits the spot that they were firing at, just to see if they can see an explosion from the shell or the shell just stops suddenly so they know it hits something. It's important knowledge you need to get. But anyway, that's enough of me telling off Brother Clicker. He managed to get an ace tanker out of this game for the amount of damage he did and the number of kills. He also got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly, as well as a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 13 and he got a gauze medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points for his own vehicle. His win eight from that game, 5,887, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, funnily enough, he did the second highest damage in the game in this one. The Caro 45T managed to get 4,717 hit points of damage. Second highest damage went to Brother Clifka. He managed to get 4,144. And the third highest damage went to the US 14.5. That really difficult player, 3,592 hit points went to him. And he got a Leather Slaves medal again. So he was using a lower tier, a lower tier tank destroyer tank no medium tank sorry uh to take out higher tier opponents so you can see how important that firing position is when somebody's in there you really do need to suppress them with rt fire to help your teammates overcome them because he was in a very strong position generated a huge amount of damage on our teammates um because he could use the position to his advantage and favor anyway when it came to kills we can see that he shared the top spot because he got four kills so did garo 45t Two kills went to the E100, the Object 263, the Yudas 03, and on the enemy team, the Yudas 14.5. And when it came to base XP, well, he got that one too. In fact, he got 1,158, and Brother Clicker was the only one to get over 1,000 base in the game. The next highest being the Leopard Prototype on our team got 924, and after that, the E100 managed to get 910. He fired 19 rounds. That's a huge amount of ammunition, which is why he did get a large amount of damage in the end. Eight direct hits on the enemy, two penetrating shots and 14 splash. Now, who did he actually penetrate in this game? Let's have a look. Um, I'm guessing that he penetrated the leopard. Yes, he did. One penetration. That was the round that hit the engine deck and he got a very nice roll out of it. And the GW Tiger, yes, he got a penetrating shot with that blind shot. Well, it was blind when he actually fired it because the GW suddenly disappeared but he did get it on target and I think the game was saying yep game over now he also got 4,144 all of it at more than 300 meters damaged seven of the enemy killed four did 2,117 hit points of stun assist off 12 stuns on a premium count, he actually earned a profit for the game of 3,923 credits if he'd actually played with a free player count he would have made a loss but he also got 1,737 XP to take away as well. So it was a profitable game, but I think Brother Clicker does need to change, or at least not change his style, but he needs to allow us to see what's going on. Because if he doesn't do that, then obviously none of his videos are going to be worth watching because all he does is shoot and scoot. And that just doesn't produce a valid um, video for other people to, to follow. So please don't do that in future. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.